This is the Kickstarter segment of Morning at NTV. The hashtag is exactly that, Morning at NTV on Twitter, on Facebook. If you are online, of course, we are streaming live, as well as for those that are across the borders and indeed beyond the oceans on YouTube. You can also catch us streaming live. Now, we are going to be discussing Dr. Samuel Oledo's case against the Uganda Medical Association or you could flip it the other way around. It could also be Uganda Medical Association against Dr. Sam Oledo, the controversial president, who, in a fit of unprecedented proportions for a professional medical worker, knelt alongside a few of his colleagues and told the president that you are doing a good job and you should continue the work. Now, that is a debate that uh, was... Uh, rolled out we do not want to repeat that today right now we are going to be discussing the case and the civil division of the high court in kampala issued an interim injunction uh, staying the suspension of dr samuel oledo as president of the uganda medical association it follows an application for a judicial review filed by oledo against his suspension by the uma extraordinary assembly that was held on sunday the assembly suspended mr oledo doctor, I must emphasize, for four years and replaced him with Dr. Edith Naku Joloba after finding him apparently guilty of engaging in partisan politics in contravention of the Uganda Medical Association Constitution. The case was called to court and this morning we want to understand what is on ground. We are now joined by Counsel Pius Katumba Mosovazi, a lawyer representing the Uganda Medical Association. A very warm welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Where Glad do we stand right now before I ask any other question? Um, what is the status of uh, Mr. Oledo? What is the state of affairs at Uganda Medical Association? Well, first, um, regarding Mr. Oledo, mm -hmm. oh, doctor, doctor, I Oledo. must emphasize, yeah. doctor, yes. Uh, regarding Dr. Oledo, um, this um, Monday, mm. um, the civil division of the High Court issued an interim injunction mm. maintaining the status quo. Now, the media has been awash with statements that his suspension has been stayed, mm. but uh, that is not the case. The okay. status quo was maintained, mm. meaning by the time we went to court on Monday, mm. the status quo was that he had been suspended on Sunday. By, by the yeah. time of World Cup kickoff, yeah. uh, Dr. Oledo had been suspended. So if court maintains the status quo mm. on Monday, it means Dr. Oledo Remain stands suspended. and remains suspended yeah. until uh, the 22nd uh, when the court will give its ruling on the status of his application. So as we speak, Dr. Oledo stands suspended from the association. From the association. Yes. And then the state of affairs regarding um, mm -hmm. um, UMA. UMA is, as you've rightly stated it, uh, Dr. Edith Naku Joloba has been or was appointed by the General Assembly as the president until the end of this term. Take us through the dynamics that allow the Uganda Medical Association Extraordinary Assembly to sit in order to decide on anything, including suspension of an official? Now, the beginning point is, after the events that you have described took place, mm. um, the association was uh, received um, what they call a member's requisition. Now, membership within the association for purposes of making decisions mm. is restricted to paid-up members. Paid-up members. Paid-up members. Yeah. Now, there was a requisition for a meeting. Mm. The minimum number of paid-up members, that's about 25% of paid-up members, mm -hmm. are the ones who can requisition an extraordinary general meeting to be able to discuss any business mm. stated in that request, requisition. our requisition. Yeah. Now, the requisition was for the censure 
it was a central motion of the president of the president because if i'm to quote the wording of the motion mm -hmm. the members of the associ association were embarrassed they were horrified that the actions of dr ledo had put the entire noble profession into of disrepute. medicine into disrepute mm. and that those were the grounds of his censure of the censure motion and those were valid grounds especially given the parameters that are set by the association's constitution yes article 3 um, specifically uh, clause 2 mm. states that you must uh, uh, one of the objectives of the association is to promote the honor mm. honor when you look at the basic de definition of honor mm. it is high esteem and repute so when those acts of uh, the president bring them into disrepute then i believe they were well within their rights somebody can excuse me for going for the semantics of this case but if you are before the president and the head of state and uh, you are an African and there is a culture for example of elders when you meet them you can decide to go on your knees so you can communicate in this case honor and repute within the confines of the Constitution of the Uganda Medical Association becomes relative isn't there a leeway to understand Dr. Oledo's actions within that prison well, I would agree with you that within various cultures, mm. kneeling is a sign of respect indeed. Yeah. But kneeling, when communicating, cannot be looked at in isolation from the actual communication. So he is not being censured for kneeling while communicating. Okay. Only. Yes? Yeah. Uh -huh. But there are, four, there are four aspects to the kneeling. Mm. The first is, I'm giving you the context. Yeah, first, please do. First, he calls up 50 students, students, mm. students of the College of Health Sciences yep. of Macau University. Mm. They, they, were are young, even, they were not they are young, they are gullible, terms. they are students. They were students. Yes, because oh. there is a letter from the College of Health Sciences mm -hmm. yes, requesting that he be admonished for his conduct. That is from the students. So these were students. Okay. Secondly, were the utterances. Mm. Not just the kneeling, but within the medical profession, if on the lighter, on the lighter side, mm -hmm. his utterances, if I'm to quote verbatim, he said, I'm loosely translating from Luganda, oh, please do. that we, the doctors, mm. have examined the fountain of honor and we have found that his heart, the iota, the vena cover, and all the other parts of the heart are very much functional. So if you're looking at it from a doctor's perspective, mm. are you going to say that him together with the students, had actually are they attending physicians to the fountain of honor? That <laughs> they've gotten his consent to share a diagnosis with the, with the, with the, with the whole world? Then you get to the kneeling. They request that students come with clinical courts. Mm. You must understand that the ceremonial gab for noble professions, mm -hmm. yes, the ceremonial gab, the clinical court for a doctor, yeah. they, for me, an advocate, the flaps, the robe yeah. I wear, mm. they symbolize something. Otherwise, he would not have requested them to come. Mm. Then the third thing is the political utterances. The political utterance says, you are as president, mm. he is the spokesperson of the association. So when he comes on any forum, mm -hmm. and then he makes an utterance, he is deemed by the general public to represent the association by virtue of the constitution. So any utterance he makes cannot be looked at or separated from the hat that he wears. Mm. Then the fourth is he represented the association without authorization of the National Executive Committee, the NEC. And the Constitution expressly prohibits anybody mm. to act in the name of the association without approval of the NEC. Because the letter requisitioning for his censure mentioned clearly that he had been told not 
to participate in the political event by the National Executive Committee of the Uganda Medical Association. So when you look at all those circumstances in totality, mm. it is not the kneeling in and of itself uh -huh. that is the result of his censure. It yeah. is the summation of the kneeling, the utterances, the politicking, and the defiance of the National Executive Committee, which is the and the National Governing Council, which are the key organs of the association. Associations and uh, many fora do often allow officials a certain uh, leeway, some kind of leverage, especially when it comes to uh, public utterances, so much so that you can say certain things and deem, or rather that you deem uh, good enough or transformational for the other members of an association. As president of the Uganda Medical Association, doesn't he have any grounds upon which he can make a statement or two and he's allowed to get away with it? He has a lot of grounds mm. and those grounds are covered within the objectives of the association. You see, it would have been different mm. if the utterances were within the, 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 the nine objectives of the association, which in summation okay. have a lot to do with the welfare of the members. Welfare of the, the welfare of the members, yeah. um, assisting them in labor matters. Yeah. Is it a negotiation? Are you lobbying? So when you look at it within those confines, mm. politicking is not lobbying. So when you look at those utterances, do they in any way advance the cause of the association? One would say putting yourself in a position that amuses the head of state is lobbying for his attention. <laughs> well, one may say that, yeah. but the General Assembly mm -hmm. did not think so. Because in the censure vote, 98% mm. of the paid up members present are voting disagreed. So, well, someone else from any other discipline may think so, mm. but if his peers who gave him that mandate do not think so, they do not think that those utterances, they, they, the gimmicks, mm. they reflect their values as an association. As an association. So it is his peers, not for me, mm -hmm. I am not judging him, mm. but his peers have called him out and they said, this does not reflect our views as an association. And they have accordingly suspended him. Take us through what grounds Dr. Sama Oledo is putting forward in seeking to reverse the decision of the Uganda Medical Association. We are unfortunate that we are unable to get somebody from the side of Dr. Oledo, including himself. But just take us through what are the grounds that he has put forth. Um, he is seeking to, he at the time, mm -hmm. was seeking to um, stop any investigation into his conduct. Oh. He wanted court to stop any investigation. Yep. He wanted to court to stop any suspension. Mm -hmm. He wanted to court to find that any proceedings or meetings that have been held without him mm. are invalid, they are null and void, they are illegal, and you get the lines. That's right. Yes. Okay. So it is to stop any investigation into his conduct, to stop any suspension, because the conduct usually, depending on the findings, mm. leads to uh, certain, um, uh, there, there are consequences. Mm in light of the findings that may uh, result out of the investigations. So right now, what yes. are we waiting for? At the moment, we are waiting for, um, for a ruling mm -hmm. on, on the temporary uh, injunction application because uh, we raised a number, a number of concerns yeah. in court um, about the propriety of this suit because Judicial review is not like any other matter. It mm. is a special case. Very. A special case where the judiciary looks into the conduct of other arms of government, of government, mm. or its agencies. So we put it to court that UMA is not an agency of government, mm. and therefore it is not subject to judicial review. This is a private, voluntary members' organization. Mm. It is not created by any law mm. except by the consent of the doctors to associate. Yeah. The second thing we it's raised an was of peers. Yes. Mm. Not a government. 
institutional agency. Mm -hmm. The second issue that we raised is that an association by law mm -hmm. is not considered a legal person. Therefore, it can neither sue nor be sued. Wait a minute. Yes. An association yes. is not a legal person. Not at all. Cannot sue, neither can it be sued. No, it cannot. So what do you mean the, the litany of associations we have in the country right now? But they, they keep suing and being sued. So what is the yeah, and the courts And the courts have on various occasions in thrown. If, from the constitutional court. Uh -huh. If you remember, just off the top of my head, okay. we had uh, a case over the grant of the ports, the case of the Uganda Freighters and Forwarders Association mm -hmm. against Attorney General. Mm -hmm. It was a constitutional petition. It was dismissed. And one of the grounds was that the petitioner, which was the association, is a non-legal entity. Why would that be one of the grounds instead of being the single ground? As in, since it's not a legal person, why even hear the case? But that's one of the issues that court is going to rule on. Okay. So at the moment, we cannot say what it will find, mm -hmm. but we brought it to court's attention. All right. Yes. Interesting there. The legalese is beginning to get Chris again a little bit dizzy. <laughs> and I'll excuse myself from it and end this conversation in a very democratic way. Many thanks for uh, giving us a perspective on this case. Uh, and uh, we shall, of course, uh, be waiting on uh, that ruling to come through on uh, Thursday. Council Pius Katumba Msobazi, a lawyer representing the Uganda Medical Association against Dr. Sam Oledo the embattled president of the association. We shall take a break, and when we return, we'll be discussing matters, economics, and banking.